What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Glen Scotia Double Cask. Stick around. So we've got a Glen Scotia with us today. This is their double cask release. This is going to be their entry level expression. It's going to be the cheapest member of their core range and it's a no age stated whiskey. Uh, Glen Scotia itself, for those of you who don't know, is a Campbelltown distillery and it's become pretty popular over the last few years. And I remember the days when Glen Scotia was kind of like the black sheep of Campbelltown. Uh, places like Springbank have been raking in praise for what seems like forever. Uh, Glen Scotia, I would say even less than 10 years ago, was considered pretty bottom tier stuff. And to be fair, uh, the stuff they were making back then was nowhere near as good as the stuff they're putting out today. So it's one of those brands that went from zero to hero in the span of a few years, which is impressive. Um, I remember some of those old bottlings. The bottles themselves were super weird. They were really colorful, like bright neon colors. I believe we had a picture of a cow on the front. Um, yeah, tacky bottles. The whiskey itself was kind of all over the place. It was not very consistent, so it was an odd era for the brand. It felt like they couldn't really figure out which direction to go in. Now, I didn't try a lot of Glen Scotia back then, but I did dabble and, you know, their whiskey was fine sometimes. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was pretty generic, and sometimes it was hot and rough. So, again, all over the place, they couldn't quite figure themselves out. But luckily, that era is past, and nowadays Glen Scotia has definitely come into their own. Anyway, our name Double Cask here doesn't refer to the fact that it was matured in bourbon barrels then finished in another kind of barrel. Double Cask refers to a double finish. So we've got two finishes on the go. This did get started in bourbon barrels and then was transferred into its first finish, which was also a bourbon barrel. But this time it was a first fill bourbon barrel. First fill bourbon barrels are going to give you a thicker mouthfeel. You're going to get lots of woods and vanillas in there. Second finish on the go here is a PX Sherry finish, which is going to give us a lot of those sweeter, fruitier, whiny notes. So, tell you what, that sounds like a combination of things I like. So, with that out of the way, why don't we hop into a review of this one, see what this whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So, this is a Glen Scotia, and they're usually pretty good with specs, but they're not totally consistent, it turns out. Uh, our ABV on this one comes in at 46%. This is a non-chill filtered expression. Unfortunately, this is a colored whiskey and that kind of surprised me. I thought that across the board we had craft presentations from Glen Scotia, but no. So we have our unnatural color here. Uh, we've got some like Campbelltown scenery. I guess it's like lasered into the glass towards the base. Label wise, um, it's fine. It's nothing outstanding. I wouldn't call it bad. It's just about as middle of the road as labels come in my opinion. Uh, presentation score for this is going to be two and a half out of five. We've got non-chill filtered on the back as well as some tasting notes. It does tell us what casks were used to finish the whiskey in which is appreciated. Um, beyond that there isn't much noise here. It's a pretty bare bones label uh, and while I do appreciate the simplicity and the transparency that we've got here I also appreciate a little bit of style, a little bit of pop and there isn't much of that going on. As it stands the bottle is fine. Let's try our nose. Okay, we definitely have a, a sherry touch to this. We get sherry in here, we get some drying spices. Uh, I'm getting Werther's Original, so like caramel and buttermilk in here. There's some sawdust, there's some vanilla, there's some like artificial sweetener in here. Uh, pastries, sultanas, and um, multi-grain Cheerios. Uh, the sherry in this is quite measured. And now the palate. Quite oily. Um, more of those Werther's original notes of like caramel, toffee, buttermilk. Uh, again with those multi-grain Cheerios, it's quite grainy. Lots of cereal notes in this. I'm getting Iron Brew which is a Scottish soda. I don't know if you tried it. And um, blood oranges. And now the finish. Mm. More of that iron brew note. I'm getting a lot more bourbon here. More woods, more vanillas are coming forward. Uh, I'm getting more citrus as well, so like these dark oranges. Um, I'm getting heavy cream, some icing sugar, and some sultanas. 
uh, lingering on cream soda and char. This is a short to medium finish. So I think this is a decent addition to the Glen Scotia Core range. We have a nice distillate here and those two finishes did add some nice layers of flavor. Now this is going to be a simple whiskey. If you're looking for complexity, look somewhere else. But you know, as a casual sipper, which is what we'd expect this to be. This is no age stated and entry level. So as a casual sipper, I think this works. I especially like the creamy notes in this. You get these uh, buttermilk and heavy cream notes just behind the caramel on the palate. Uh, delicious. I also like the cereal and grain notes in here because they remind me specifically of uh, multi-grain Cheerios. And I know that is oddly specific, but I kind of like it when whiskeys take me somewhere oddly specific. And I like Cheerios. But I should say that while I do like some of the flavors in here, I also find it lacking in depth and complexity, which is not surprising. It's an entry-level whiskey. It's no age stated. And of course, for that category of whiskey, the bar is set pretty low. But that being said, there are whiskeys out there that pull it off much better than this. This is one of those whiskeys that works best independently as kind of like a casual nip outside of a session. Now, when I was first introduced to this whiskey, it was surrounded by honestly better whiskeys and the flavors in here came off pretty bland, pretty muted. So initially I wasn't too taken with it. Luckily, I have spent time with it alone, separate from other whiskeys since that time. And yeah, it works. As I said, it works only as a casual sipper though. So definitely don't expect too much here. It's a basic whiskey. Now, of course, anytime you have a basic whiskey next to the good stuff, the basic whiskey is not going to impress, but I don't know. I found that particularly true of this one. Um, anyway, I do think this is a good introduction to the Glen Scotia House style, and it's also an accessible introduction to Campbelltown, which is good. Because, you know, Campbelltown whiskeys are famously unpretty, and what we've got with this one is an affordable, accessible offering um, from a region that's usually pretty challenging to beginners. And I would say that's true of Glen Scotia on the whole. Glen Scotia is much more polished, much more accessible than stuff like Springbank. So it makes a great segue into the flavors that you can expect from the region. So my score here is going to be 82. I think this whiskey is okay, but not outstanding. Uh, as I said, it works as a casual sipper, but not much more than that. Uh, it's pretty basic stuff. Um, I do like the creams, the caramels, the cereal notes in this, and I do think the finishes are competently done. But my issue, and this is a personal issue, is that there isn't much in here that I find stimulating. Um, we don't have much complexity. We don't have many interesting flavors in here to explore. Um, nothing in this really grabs my attention. The thing about Campbelltown is that it's such a small craft area that they don't really produce anything generic, but if they were to produce something generic, this would be it. Uh, this is to Campbelltown what, let's say, Aberlour 12 is to Speyside, which is to say it's simple, it's accessible, and it is pretty good. But it works best as an introduction to a larger, more expansive world of flavors. At the end of the day, this one is easy to sip. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. I mean, 82 is not a great score, especially for me, because I tend to score pretty generously. Um, but yeah, despite all the cask play with this, it ends up being a pretty simple whiskey. Um, I wouldn't call it complex. I wouldn't even call it interesting. It's pleasant and it'll work for some of you. Value here is fine. Uh, this is a you get what you pay for situation. I certainly wouldn't want to pay any more for this bottle than I did, but oppositely, I wouldn't expect them to charge any less. Uh, I think the pricing is appropriate. Um, as it stands, it's definitely not the best whiskey in its price category. There are many better whiskeys out there for the same price. But if you want an accessible, affordable, entry-level offering from Campbelltown because you're one of those guys that absolutely loves everything from Campbelltown, I'm sure this will work for you. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Glen Scotia Double Cask? What were your thoughts on it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.